Uh, TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on the post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Uh, this behind me, this is the Lit One Live, man. If you miss any lives, um, there are shorts. There's uh, little videos of what's on the live that's not on regular channels. Links down in the description. This is Patreon. We just watch people just do nothing on there. Links down in the description. And we do got the Discord. Links down in the description. Hold on now. This is, this seems very interesting. I don't think I've ever heard like the testimony of somebody who actually has been a part of a, been a part of a, this right here. This title. Hold on, wait, what is... Oh, yeah, no, see, out of school, yeah. In this episode of Minutes with... We sat down with an incredible Waliki Khan, a survivor of the 2014 Pishna School Massacre. What? I don't even... What is... I don't even... I don't know what's going on. I don't be watching the news. It was a long time ago, though, but I'm down. So I was born in the northwestern sides of Pakistan in, in a city called Peshawar. I think um, since my childhood, my parents wanted me and my uh, siblings to get quality education. So my school life was um, my, my, my whole life probably. Like, um, it, was, it was the only place where I would go. It's probably one of the best schools in the city, and I had friends there, my best friends, which were kind of like my second family because, you know, you have uh, breakfast with them in the morning because we would go so early. It was a military school, so it would start really early, and we had to like a military school. Okay. wake up at five in the morning and then um, go there, and uh, you have lunch with them. So it was kind of like a second family to me. Are you able to just kind of touch on the political situation in Pakistan? at this time? So uh, I think um, around 2007, I would say, things started going wrong in there, in, especially in Peshawar. That was the city most affected by terrorism. And uh, before that, um, the Taliban uh, or the terrorist group, when they came to the cities like Peshawar. The Pakistani Taliban is a militant Islam, is, Islamist group formed in opposition to the military in, in, in 2007. There was um, uh, probably bomb blast and suicide bomb attacks on daily basis. And um, my family, my parents, my mom and my dad, they would be worried all the time. They would be watching news all the time. And uh, the day I realized that something was going wrong in, in, in our city was when um, I think there was a few people in our neighborhood and that, that died in a bomb blast, in a suicide bomb attack. And, when I saw their family and their family members and friends crying and shouting, and that's when I realized that things are not going really well, as I thought. That's around a, man, me. listen. How old were you at that point? That's what I be trying to tell people. Like in America, it's we got it overly sweet. It's sweet here. Like ain't nothing really. We don't have no trenches, man. It's the trenches to us, but worldwide, man, our trench is not comparable. I was around like probably around 10, 8, 10, 9, something like that. It was the day of 16 December where it started as a normal day and I went to Christmas? school as per routine, sat with my friends. We had our breakfast, we were chatting about our, our normal stuff, cricket, politics, uh, WWE, everything. So we were discussing the cricket and politics. That's what I was talking about. These things, and then I was I was the head boy at school at, at that time. So um, one of my teachers came up and they told me that uh, we are having a first aid lecture in the auditorium. So uh, I should tell all the students in year eight and year nine that they should be heading to towards auditorium. And I think most of the students I saw they all were celebrating and were kind of happy that they're going to miss lessons today uh, due to the first aid lecture. So. Um, we, we went to the auditorium and I think everyone sat down and the first aid lecture started and 
uh, things things were going normal at that time yeah. in um, us children. Normal business, you know. Remember my friends, uh, because I was the head boy, so I was kind of like on the stage and my friends from- I don't know what that means, head boy. I was I was the last boy or something because I don't know what a head boy is. I, I was mm -mm. the audience would make like these funny faces to make me laugh, and um, then all of a sudden we heard a noise. There was a there was a noise. Uh, it was it was a loud noise, and um, I think some of the some of the students um, just jumped like they were they weren't expecting it, and the others started laughing at them that they got scared and. Uh, uh, then we again continued, like no one really paid attention to that. And then uh, we heard those noises again, and this time... I'm trying was... to put myself in this situation, like if I'm in school and I hear any... If I'm anywhere and I sit here, any type of noise that's not normally supposed to be there, me personally, I'm running. Me personally. I know the 8th and ninth graders, but in ninth and 8th grade, I was running. <laughs> I no like no funny business. I'm not. I'm telling the dead ass truth. Even till right now, if I hear any noise that I know that's not supposed to be there, I'm running. It's consistent, like those started getting louder and louder and getting more consistent. Uh, that's when everyone Been in the running. auditorium like uh, was silenced and uh, everyone was looking up to the teachers that what what is happening and um, I think. At that time, I was assuming that it was a military drill, and most of the students, so were most mm, of the I forgot that. Okay, I forgot that y'all was at a military school, so like those sounds might be, you know what I'm saying? A part of y'all day to days, maybe. I wonder if the school was set up like our schools and in, in where I'm from. Like Most of the auditoriums have a door that you can get outside to students and uh, but when those sounds started getting even more louder that's when um, I had a bit of a doubt and everyone was like a little like scared as well like what, what is happening and I looked at one of my teachers there in the auditorium I was like oh, what's what's happening and uh, they told me that oh don't worry it's nothing it's, it's just gonna be okay and I was like okay but what is this like we don't know and then uh, our teachers started lo uh, locking all the doors in the auditorium uh, and uh, that's when like most of the students in there started getting more scared now and they started getting more anxious like why are the teachers locking the doors and I saw a few people like with shadows standing outside and when they realized that the door was locked, they started kicking it. They kicked it once and when they kicked it the second time, the door broke and they came in. Everyone started going under their chairs. I still remember I could see everyone because I was still on the stage and I, I looked at my teacher and I was a bit like scared and I was like, what, what is happening? Like, just tell me like, what, what's happening? Like, and then they started shooting. They, they oh, golly. I mean, at our school, we had chains on our doors. So you can lock the door and put a chain on it. They started shooting all of a sudden. They started shooting people at the back and, and I, I was in a shock. I, I couldn't believe my eyes. I was, I was just standing still. I couldn't move. I didn't know what to Frozen. do. My, I just went blank. Uh, one of them suddenly aimed their gun towards me because I was standing right in front from a distance and uh, shot me on the face. The first bullet I received on the face, um, I still remember that I uh, screamed. I screamed really loudly because uh, that was probably one of the first bullets that broke my teeth and my maxilla and that pierced through my face. Uh, and I... I I fell down on the floor and I still couldn't believe it, like what was happening. I was, I, I was still in a shock and I was, I was in pain, I was in shock and I, I didn't know what was happening the around first me. first bullet hit you and like that? And then I saw a few of my friends getting shot in their heads because I was, as I was lying down and, and my, my brain was just wasn't accepting this situation. I was like, this is, this is not true, this is a dream, like this can't be true, like my, my, my friends just died in front of my eyes. Like they, they, they were just talking to me like a minute ago and 
they, they are no more with me. And here I am dying, like about to die. As I was lying down there, I was, I was, I don't know what, what happened, but I just said to myself that, no, I'm, I'm just gonna try to survive. I'm, uh, I'm gonna give it my best. Like I'm still breathing. I was, I was, I was telling myself that this was, uh, I, was I was just putting my hand on my mouth. And uh, the first time I tried to put my hand on my face, my hand went in uh, because it was open. Damn. It had opened up. So when um, I, I just kept telling myself uh, because I had no one to console me. So I was, I just kept consoling myself that. I'm, I'm still breathing, I'm still breathing. And I was, I was just breathing and I was like, I just putting my hand on my mouth again and again. I'm like, I'm still breathing, I'm still breathing. It's, I'm still alive. One of them um, saw me like that I was, I was still moving and I was still doing movements and, and they shot me again. Um, they I know this is a serious matter, but like I would like, at this point, like I know it's easy to say what I would have done, but no lie, if I if I got shot, that looked like a fatal shot to whoever whoever did it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm laying on the ground, being as still as possible, right? They shot me again. They kicked me to see whether I was still alive. Um, and they were they were checking every student in the auditorium. They were they were. They were going around and they were checking everyone whether if, if anyone would move, they would start shooting at them again. My friend lying down there in front of me, like me lying down on the floor looking at them and they, they were dead. They were no more and I, I, was, I was just about to, uh, to die. Um, I, st I still remember that after like a, a few minutes, like five, ten minutes, um, they left the auditorium. And um, at that time, I was lucky that my senses were still working. I could still see things a bit blurry. I could still hear things. I could still think. And um, I was, I heard some people saying that they have left. Some students saying in the auditorium, they were mumbling to each other like they had left. So I was trying to wave my hand. I was trying to like call like someone so that they can help me get up and move. Uh, uh, but I think it was it was a chaotic situation, and it was it was a shock for everyone as well. They were kids themselves, so there was there was no one to help. Uh, so what you're basically saying is, at that point, it was all man for himself. They they just started running outside and. Um, at that time, I, I didn't realize that I was shot on my leg and my arm as well, because the pain in my face was so much that I didn't pay any attention to my leg or my hand. Like, uh, so that's true. You can only feel pain in one spot. You can only feel one thing. Or... And um, my wrist as well, because they kicked me when the terrorists kicked me, my wrist cracked, kind of, my right wrist cracked. So. I didn't pay attention to any of those injuries because I had no idea I had them. Um, my whole focus was on my face that, uh, my, because it was, it was so painful. When there was no one to help me, I, I tried to drag myself. I tried to crawl. I tried to drag myself. I couldn't get up. I couldn't stand up. I tried to, but I couldn't. So I tried to drag myself and I tried to crawl and somehow I managed to get out of the auditorium. Uh, there was no one to help me. There was, there was a class about six to eight meters away from me. And I was trying to get there because uh, it was an year seven class and uh, I was trying to get, get there, but uh, I, had lots, I had lost so much blood and I had so, so many injuries that it was, it was really, really hard for me to even like move one meter. And when I tried to do that, it took everything out of me. Those six to eight meters took everything out of me. And I managed to reach that place. I managed to reach the door and then my body had lost all its strength. I was just telling myself that I shouldn't just close my eyes, shouldn't let myself go to sleep. If, if someone is coming here to rescue me or these people, they would think that I have died. So I have to stay awake to let them know that I, I'm still alive. And there was there was a tree, a big tree. My boy, his will to survive is something crazy, eh? Tree outside our school, and I was looking at that tree, and um, 
when the fires, when the shooting was. He got a, he's, he, what's his IQ? His logical thinking is off the charts. <laughs> He was out there thinking still logically. You can still hear the shooting, you can still hear the bomb blast, and uh, the, the birds were flying from that tree, they were scattering. So um, I still remember, I, was, I, was, I just said to myself that I wish I was one of these and I could fly away from here like them easily. After 10 minutes, uh, there was a military person that came and uh, they picked me up from the door and they they saw me lying down in front of the door and they picked me up and they put me in an ambulance. He remained in coma in the ICU for eight days. Eh? I had um, been shot with bullets on my face. Uh, it was multiple bullets on my face and um, my hand, my arm and um, my, my right knee uh, was shot with bullet as well. And, I had got like some splinters at the back of my neck. Um, it was from the blast and stuff. Um, uh, oh, like legit splinters, you mean? Okay. And uh, I had, with, with my face. Probably some crazy splinters though. These injuries were the most severe injuries that I sustained. Um, I'd lost all my upper teeth, uh, my maxilla, my jaws, and the base of my nose uh, was completely broken. and. Uh, it still is, and uh, the right side of my face was completely blown away. So at first, my family didn't know that it was me because they still had doubts because I, I had sustained injuries on my face, and my face was completely covered with bandages. So uh, in the initial days, my family was 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 really really confused. He, my dad had recognized me from a T-shirt that he gave me a few days before the attack. So that's how he recognized me. During that whole um, time, had you realized like what was actually like going on? At that time, to be honest, I still had no idea. When I got shot, when I went to the hospital, I had no idea why these people shot me or my friends. Um, I have had nightmares, even when I... Uh, I would imagine PTSD is a real thing, bro. Uh, after a few months when I was in, in, in my room in the hospital, I would have nightmares, I would have uh, dreams and I kept on looking at the door when I was in ICU because that shock when I saw them breaking in the auditorium, I kept on looking at, at the door in hospital as well that someone might break through that and just come in again. And um, I only knew about a few of my friends that I saw at that time that died, but I didn't know about most of them and I didn't know what had happened to them. 149 people at a school, that's ridiculous. Of those, 132 were school children ages 8 to 18. That time I was about like 12. Like, if you have the capacity to do that, like, to that many kids, like, and what, what are you fighting for at that point? Like, what are, what are you claiming that you're really fighting for that's telling you to do that in your mind? It don't make sense. Like, nothing, nothing could make sense of that for me. Well, nothing is going to rationalize that. <laughs> Ten years old, and those friends had spent, like, about eight years of their life with me. So that was, that was my whole life for me. It was a short life. So it was, it was my whole life for me, and I'd known them for my whole life. So... Year eight. So he was eight years old, or he was in eighth grade? Which one? When I, when I saw them, that their names were on the list, that people had died, uh, the first thing that was shocking for me was... Oh, when I saw that 132 kids in our school were killed and uh, my heart just sank. Like, I was like, I was just praying that please, none of my best friends be on it. Like I was, I was just praying. And um, when, I, when I saw their names and all of their names were on the list, uh, that's, that's when I, I just went in a shock. I, I couldn't believe it at that time. I was, uh, I was like, this is not true. I, I haven't seen them. I haven't even seen their bodies yet. Like, they, they can't. Like, when, 
when sometimes when you just don't see your loved ones like like that you you don't really accept it you your brain, your heart, doesn't accept that they're no more with you. I would, I would be crying. I'd be telling myself that, you know, what if I would have done this? What if I would have laid down and I could have survived? I, I wouldn't have got shot and then I could have saved my friends. And, and the fact that, you know, I was, I was the one that uh, called most of them to the auditorium. You couldn't have done that, my boy. For uh, him, because I was the head boy, I was told by the teacher. So that guilt was kind of like really really like um yeah, making it difficult for me uh and I was, I was i was it was kind of killing me from inside my mom goes to me and she's like uh what what will happen if you cry now or if you uh just you know go in that darkness that you know you just uh, has nothing to do with life now what will happen will your friends come back with that uh, will it change anything? And I had no answer to that. And then she tells me that instead of crying and sitting here, what you should be doing, you should recover. You should try to recover, work on your recovery and do something for them. Do something that, you know, no other people or none, no other Walid's friends should be mar martyred or like killed like that. You should be getting up and doing something for them. While Lee was taken to Birmingham, UK for facial reconstruction surgery, he spent two years in the hospital there before starting a local school in Birmingham, okay. Going through like a near-death experience, especially so young, how do you think that's changed your perspective on, on life? I think uh, before this incident, I had no purpose uh, and I mean I, w I was young as well but you know I didn't realize the value of life I didn't realize the value of education uh, that that's what it gave me like a sense of realization how important this thing that I'm doing and I'm taking for granted is I was I I'd just say simply that you know before this incident like I just wanted to live for myself and now I want to live for others what would you I suppose one. That's how I'd be feeling low key. When I got when I got when I got shot at <laughs> and I survived. I didn't get hit. I it wasn't as it wasn't no, nah, I'm not gonna it was it was crazy for me, but it probably wasn't on the same level, like world level as what's going on with his, but like it opened my eyes. Like I, I couldn't live that selfishly no more. Because I, when I had a daughter, like, I had to open my eyes. Like, I had to sort of live. I had to be there for her. Like, can't go through that. Can't People do that People to time. know about your classmates that lost their lives. I think I, I just want them to know that, you know, they were, they were there to get education. They, they weren't there to fight anyone. And they were, they were innocent. They were all innocent. And uh, they were killed brutally for just getting education. They were killed brutally for just... Uh, wanting a future, a bright future for themselves. They were brave. They were. They had. They all had bright futures. Uh, they were all. Someone was future army officers. Some of them were future politicians, businessmen. They all had aspirations. They all had dreams uh, that were just shattered in in a few minutes. Uh, that was just taken away by a few gunshots. In life, you know, you, life is not what you think will happen. Life is what happens to you. So it, it's a hard, hard pill to swallow, but sometimes you just have to accept and live with that reality. Don't ever take the opportunities or the education or, uh, you know, whatever life opportunities you have for granted. Yeah, that, that was deep. See you later, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. I'm gone.